Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a new episode of Flesh Wound Farce, where we review and discuss your and our favorite comedy films. This is the world's first and only combination trivia host and professional wrestling announcer of Chilean descent that currently resides in Southern California, Ozzy V. And with me as always on this program, first in the Northern California Bay Area, world famous juggler, Greg Larson. How you doing, Greg? Ozzy, I'm doing great. Looking forward to another fun show. Good to see you guys. And uh, how you doing, Ozzy? Look like you got a little company there. Yeah, okay, ghost, whatever. We... <laughs> hey, he made the shirt. He made the shirt. Okay, anyway. Which... Uh, i just like to... See... Okay, yes, we, we see the shirt, the Farce Line shirt. Todd, is it still available for sale? It is for one more week. Oh, look at that. So better... Better get on that. Mine's on the way. Anyhow, uh, now I did reference you without introducing you, Todd. Oh. Got Flesh Wound producer, Todd. How you doing? Chilling. Before we get into this week's review of Summer School, released on July 22nd, 1987, I just want to give a brief note. Uh, you asked how I was doing, and I didn't get a chance to answer that question because we wanted to focus on the ghost. But... I saw Thor Love and Thunder last week, and I'm not, this isn't no spoiler or anything, but uh, I'm still upset about the use of November God, Rain Jesus. in that song. I'm not going to let it go. <laughs> I'm not going to let it go because I swear it's, it felt like that they just wanted to use the riff and forgot what the song was about. Because when I heard just the riff, I remembered the riff. what the song was about. <laughs> they did just want to use the riff, which is how most things are scored. No, it, but it's that's just so annoying. Honestly, if anybody's it. listening to this, here's my opinion: hire Slash to do the score for the next movie. That would be awesome. You have the guitarist from Guns N' Roses, and that way it could be original music, and I don't need to worry about goofy moments during what I remember to be serious dramatic riffs. Then you know again, it's a comedy, like, right? The movie. I don't <laughs> care. I really don't care. The vision I sight, I see in that riff when I hear that riff. The vision I see is Slash playing in an empty graveyard, like outside that church. And it's just so like powerful. But what I saw it used for what it was used for, give me a fucking break. And Are the only know, reason, hold on a second. No, stop. The only reason I'm doing this now is because, spoiler alert, I loved this movie, the one that we're going to talk about today. So I understand people love the Aussie Rage. So we're going to get the Aussie Rage with Summer School. So I want to give the Aussie Rage towards Thor. Love and Thunder for the simple use of not knowing the proper way to use November Rain. And you know what? I actually have a reaction video of when Ozzy like heard the song played. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta do some <laughs> covert operation and sneak into your computer and delete that video, and then everything will be fine. Anyhow, enough shenanigans. <laughs> This week we are. I'm sorry, I cut you off, Todd. No, I'm that? stopping. I'm, I'm. Go ahead. Good. Just send good. it to me. We'll have a backup, so we'll be good. Uh, Never I'll do Ozzy. a multi covert operation. I I'm just care. gonna put it on YouTube, and then it'll be out there forever. <laughs> and the new little story. <laughs> anyway, this week we are reviewing and discussing Summer School, released on July 22nd, 1987. Rated PG-13 with a runtime of 97 minutes. Todd, do you have the trailer available? You know what we need? I mean, besides bread. We need a woman to appreciate what we have to offer. Freddie Shoot loves to cut class. Hates to do homework. Lives for summer vacation. Look, Freddy, you're a semi-charming guy and a real snappy dresser. You're just not the kind of guy I date anymore. Yeah? What kind of guy you date now? Oh, the kind who wears socks. And the only reason he hasn't been expelled yet is because he's the gym teacher. Oh, Mr. Shoop. At Oceanfront High. Congratulations. You've been chosen to teach summer school. No, I'm not a real teacher. That's all right. These aren't real students. They're unmotivated, irresponsible, not too bright. They'll relate to you. You in this class, too? Mm -mm. I'm teaching it. No way! Right off the bat, you show them who's in charge. Hmm? Please take your seats. 
Where should we take him? Who is in charge? I recommend this time I pass. You're gonna do well, Jerome. I can feel it. I've seen some of your students. Very scary. <laughs> There's a very valid reason for summer vacation. The human brain needs rest. I know you guys aren't exactly fired up about English, but we're stuck here. We're trapped like rats. Tension breaker had to be done. Mark Harmon. You need an intelligent, sensitive man who can skate. Kirsty Allen. Do you know such a guy? Oh, they're hard to find. In the Oceanfront High Summer School Class of 87. They're as smart as you and me. You and I. All of us. Paramount Pictures presents a new film by Carl Reiner. Summer School. I love this film. It had passion plucky spirit. Dave, I agree with you. Thumbs up from me. Same here. To sum it up, I'm Chainsaw. I'm Dave. We'll see you at the movies. That was the trailer for Summer School, once again released on July 22nd, 1987, rated PG-13. The runtime of 97 minutes, directed by Carl Reiner, written by Stuart Birnbaum, David Dashev, and Jeff Franklin. What I thought was interesting is producers were Howard Rest and Robert Shapiro. I say that correctly. Uh, were the same producer or that production company produced Seinfeld. Mm. That was an interesting thing there. Uh, initial thoughts. Funny thing about this is this is the first time I saw this movie from start to finish because I'd always always seen parts of it uh, and just never the very end and never the very beginning. Mm -hmm. So it was fun to revisit. Uh, it had the the kind of charm that you would get from, uh, I guess, from like a corny 80s kids movie. But it had, I guess, hmm, I, I it's a definitely like it's a blank there. I don't know how to fill that in, but uh, it, it's a product it, of the 80s. <laughs> it's a yes. It's a product 100%. of the eighties. It hit really, it hit really well for me, Greg. Like this was a movie I I hadn't seen before, um, and I was I was nervous because <laughs> eighties <80s laughs> movies can be very hit or miss, especially when it's the first time that you've seen it. Because um, a lot of the eighties movies, it's a lot of nostalgia, you know, um, but was pleasantly surprised like i felt it, it was a fun story and um had a few good laughs and and really hit hit all the markers that i i wanted from that like vintage feel god will it, will it come to any surprise that i love this film as a child right i imagine that's <laughs> um i actually found out about it first from fangoria magazine from the gore scene and they were covering all that because uh, I can't remember. It was the makeup guy from one of the Friday the 13th. Oh, right. So it was like a big, and that's how I found out about the movie. I mean, even though it was comedy. Um, yeah. And also, but, who did the music for this movie? Danny uh, Elfman, pre Batman. Yeah. So this exactly. is this is like Oingo Boingo, Danny Elfman. Yeah, you can yeah. hear the Oingo Boingo in exactly. it. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. But, Versus uh, now, you just hear the Danny Elfman in everything he does. Right, and and also uh, imitated as well. But back to this movie. When it comes to a lot of these moments, from start to finish, there was a lot of stuff going on. It was, it was not. It wasn't just stupid jokes it was actually stuff that actually moved the story along which was nice to see uh and again with a runtime of 97 minutes it just kind of flew by and i was having fun from start to finish but when it comes to a moment that had me in pain and my brain laughing tears coming out of my eyes is one of the students who's described to be nocturnal because he's always asleep name's larry mm -hmm. and it's later to be revealed that he with a fake id got a job as an exotic dancer and i have two lines from this particular character that are my favorite so i'm just going to do one just in case you guys have the other 
but it's when the reveal happened, which you don't see. You're told about the reveal, but when the story is <laughs> told, I could not stop laughing and I was <laughs> gasping for air. Uh, it was not only because of what the, the reveal story was, and I'm not going to say it because I don't want it to be a spoiler despite being from 87, right. but the delivery of it was brilliant and I, I loved it 100%. Greg? Well, first off, I'm going to say I can call Todd's favorite moment, possibly. There, yeah. The problem with this one, I have so many. Okay. <laughs> like, this right, is like the fair. longest, like, on my phone. It's like that much <laughs> <laughs> notes I have from last night. Gotcha, gotcha. Is one but of it, them involving a substitute teacher? <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, um, so, I had two that, like, I was really torn between one that like mid movie i was like set gosh that was funny like because i love a good slapstick moment and then one that sorry my sorry about the train interrupting this moment but um another one was like at the end which like you know last minute punchline is 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 rough to choose between because of how they hit because one's a long game um but i'm gonna go with uh the there's a moment where there's a girl who's taking her driving test and it was just a subtle moment. It was a simple moment, but when she finishes and she gets so excited, she like jumps out of the car, but the seatbelt <laughs> like it was such a great slapstick moment. I was like, ah, oh, that's like, that's a reality slapstick. And I really appreciated that. Todd. All right. Well, I mean, yes, my favorite scene, of course. Yes, we know that. Favorite like line was my hard part. Um, and one that gets me every time is in it, it's when they're getting their favors. That sounds a little off, but <laughs> and, and they're watching te Texas Chainsaw Mass Massacre in the classroom, and the uh, the uh, what's was he vice principal? Yes. What's yes? Asks him. Do I want to know what this is? And he's just like, <laughs> <laughs> he says, new film from the district, safe use of power tools. <laughs> and, and the shot, as he said, that yes. was that I iconic shot of Leatherface swinging the chainsaw yes. around. That's such <laughs> a smart, like, just bravo, like, perfect. Uh, and and I do have one other I'm going to throw out. Do you have another one, Ozzy, before I do this one? Yeah. No, well, I mean, you go go ahead. Okay, I'll just do this one real quick. Another one is just a moment. It's one probably because you can feel a little bit when they're at the beach. And right as they're about to, she's about to take her top off. She <laughs> corrects her. It's like, oh, no, no, no. And just the look and the reactions of getting cock-blocked <laughs> like that. It's like... <sighs> <sighs> I feel your pain. It was so close. <laughs> it was just the looks on their that, face. I guarantee like... that was not the first take. I think I think uh, Carl Reiner, the director here, I really think he did a great job getting those kind of emotions out there uh, and, and really working with them. I just got that sense because you don't get good stuff like that on the first take. Yeah. yeah. There's a uh, lot of there's a lot of like uh, like names like. Well, people that went on in the genre, well, my genre at least, Kelly Joe Min Minter, uh, who plays the niece, was in uh, Night. Which which Night Ran on Street? Or am I thinking of the other girl? Um. Oh, what what? Well, the sleeping guy is in. Okay, oh, she's in Nightmare on Elm Street Five. The sleeping guy, and I forget his name. He's in uh, Larry. April Fool's Day. Larry's okay. in April Fool's Day, and then Shawnee Smith, the pregnant girl, is in like eight of the Saw movies. Uh, okay. So so. <clears throat> I just want to say the other line from Larry when teacher finds him in the club and says, if you knew then what you knew at 17, like, I know. And there's just that pause. And the teacher's just, I really hate that kid. <laughs> like just the, <laughs> that sheer jealousy. And I'll tell you, I didn't, I don't recall that scene from ever watching it from, that was the first time I'd seen that whole, storyline or whatever it hit with me funnier now than it probably would then so right and i think right. there's another line that's referenced that 
it's all downhill from 18, but it's a fun ride. <laughs> <laughs> that that hit really hard. And uh, I just got to throw in before we move, like the bathroom pass. Uh, like, oh, long the... game on the bathroom pass. Yeah, was brilliant. <laughs> that it was it was a reward for remembering that one. Uh, just a side small detail, because, of course, I host trivia three nights a week, right? So when somebody holds a microphone and the switch is facing outward and it's in the down position, that sticks out to me like a sore thumb. It was towards the end when everybody's taking the test. He's got the microphone in hand. He's talking to everybody, but the switch is facing the camera and the switch is in the down, the off position. So that was just something that stuck out to me, but I'm not going to. It's all almost that. as bad as not knowing how to use November Rain in a score. <laughs> Don't get me started because I'm about to give this a great score and I don't want you to ruin this moment. Okay. And <laughs> this moment is me giving this film a five. I had fun with it. I felt it flowed very well and definitely uh, worth worth a watch. Especially now, great summer movie. I, I do watch this. I watch this every year since it's been out. So this is Jesus. At least my twenty fifth time. Well, there you go, Greg. Um, you know, with with how we're ranking things, with how much fun we had with it, you know, if I were to rank this as a comedy, it would probably be a, a much different score. Um, because it was it was fun, but it wasn't. I wouldn't say like completely comedy driven, um, but it was a really fun movie. Like this is one that just like makes you feel good. Um, doesn't have expected moments all the time. Um, and, and I think really gives you a good unique story. Um, all, but yeah, it's, it's, I, I have to agree with you. It's five. Like it's, it's just fun. Like now that I know about this movie, it's going to make my rotation for sure. Yeah, definitely. Todd? Wow, I, I'm shocked. Yeah, I'm a five also. I, you might actually get some people to lighten up on you. Well, maybe once you do that Superman 3 commentary. Oh, my God! Oh, they are going to say Ozzy can't have fun with Thor, so... <laughs> Dan's going to be Team Ozzy with that one, so... That's that's where you are, well, Ozzy. I think that's for a different reason. <laughs> I think that's going to make o Ozzy change his mind. <laughs> uh... One thing that I did want to mention that I did forget to mention, and this is, I, goes into the kind of detail, though, was when, in of course, the favors or whatever is happening, and the teacher is about to give Denise the driving lesson, and as she slides over, both Chainsaw and Dave get out of the car and are scared <laughs> to death. Yes. And that is just so funny because the entire time they're the wisecracking guys that – they're like the gory guys. They love Texas, you know, all this stuff. But that scares them to death. And I thought that was a nice touch. Then you were going to say something, Todd. I'm sorry, before I cut you off. I was going to say, did you get this angry when ECW used November rain every year for the annual pay-per-view package? No, because at that time, I was still young and stupid. So it didn't matter. Now so, that I'm older. Oh, wait, wait. So it was okay then. Because you didn't have that context of knowing what the song was really about. No, it it's was because I was down, fine. Doesn't mean like no, it, it does because the at the time half. I wouldn't mind barbed wire and wrestling matches, but now I do. So sue me. Anyway, that's not what this is about. This is about a fantastic movie. But here's Todd trying to be a complete dick. I apologize, ladies and gentlemen. I wanted to end on a positive, you know, fun note, but Todd's like, "No, as has been." What are you know? What this is from too many dinners out. He's been filling. Oh, come on, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. If you're listening to the audio version of this, it I really just recommend you might as well just watch the YouTube at Flesh Wound Features because <laughs> Todd likes to throw in stuff every now and then. If you're on the audio version, you just missed a shot of me eating ribs with a photoshopped version of Jim Cornette. So there's that. Now, anything else? Final thoughts love, on this. Uh, what, 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 Todd? What? I'll save it. We're doing final thoughts. Go ahead, sir. That I asked that. That's what. Final All right. Thought, well, that, well, this wasn't a final, final thought. thought. My final thought was to remind you. 
Oh my gosh. Yes. Sell the shirt. Okay, fine. You got to, you can again at teespring.com. Hold on a second. I got to get the site up. Uh, uh, teespring.com T E E spring.com slash stores slash flesh wound features teespring.com slash stores slash flesh wound features. If you're watching the YouTube version, you see it there on the site. It'll be available for what Todd says is another week. And I don't know. We might get sued. So you might as well get it before we get <laughs> sued. So yeah, press the, the DVDs turned out pretty well. <laughs> like you could clearly see what what's down there. So, yeah. So I just private want school. to it's easy to see. I, so there private might be an nice individual. It might be an individual that just walked by that's watching some, that see somebody else watching this review show and just sees you looking down saying, I'm surprised it came out pretty well. <laughs> and they don't okay. know. Time the the initiative of moments. <laughs> <laughs> so and as I said, any final thoughts on this film before we close out for the evening? It's a, it's a buy. Like definitely yeah. enjoy it. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, and I, I yeah. How, how can you forget this? I, I forgot to mention Courtney Thorne Smith. Also in Revenge of the Nerds, the sequel, as the front desk. Yeah, she's in the second one. She was also in According to Jim's for like a decade. You know what? I do have oh, one thing. That's right. Yes. Was there anything inappropriate about this film that Ozzy feels the need to rain about? Because I think there is one thing. Slightly there was one thing, and I just, but it, he at least caught it. Okay, so we have to go into detail. So sorry, I didn't mean to there's a party in. that happens, a fourth of July party that happens at the teacher's house because that's the exchange to get them, you know, do work. Everybody's got to get a favor. So one of the favors is a party at the house. And he the teacher in his late 30s in his bedroom as the kids are partying or whatever. Am I on the right track, Todd? Yes. <laughs> and then you have Courtney Thorne Smith coming in and starts to be make advances make advances however as soon as she got on the bed he did all right let's go you know like he knew what was going on right <laughs> and the favor that this much of a spoiler not pertinent the favor that she wanted from is she wanted to move in with him and he just thought okay you're in a tough situation whatever and then one of the one of the scenes, he comes home and she made dinner for the two of them. And he's kind of a little awkward, but it's okay. But it's not until Kirstie Alley's character comes in and gives the line, I hope having a maid is worth getting her heart broken or something to that effect. <laughs> it's like, Ugh. So it's a little awkward. And to Greg's point, when, met, when watching an, a movie from this time for the first time, some things can be jarring and some things, you know, you could understand i understand i guess but compared to other movies from the 80s, <laughs> we'll find very us. tame and it is uh, like, yes i agree like, i i i also didn't feel like he was trying to be a creeper you know like i think there were two factors like i felt one he's like i gotta do what i gotta do to keep my job like get my tenure <laughs> like, and then on top of that like he wasn't making any advances or anything so you know at least it wasn't private school level you know yeah, it wasn't <laughs> because the director knew how to illustrate how the teacher cared genuinely for the students as students right. and wanted them to advance as adults you know it's funny right. earlier you mentioned like the, the the 80s goofy sitcom thing makes sense with carl reiner as the director right so there you go all right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was summer school. It's a buy. Go ahead, check it out. It's fives from all of us. And if you guys don't have anything else, I'm going to close it out for the evening. That is world famous juggler Greg Larson, Flesh Wound producer Todd, and I'm Ozzy V. We'll see you next week right here on Flesh Wound Farce. <laughs>